what is a phantom zero? So we are going to design basically at this stage the characteristic polynomial of the servo function because the servo function was a measure for the deviation of the real transfer from the designed ideal transfer at an earlier stage. So let's have here a servo function and a loop gain that has a uh, Numer uh, uh, numerate has zeros and has poles, and then we have already seen this expression. Let's say we can write a server function in this way. This is called the numerator, denominator, the char characteristic polynomial of the servo function. And the poles of the servo function are found by solving this characteristic polynomial. So let's do a loop game with a number of poles and see what happens. The loop gain pulse product, we have already seen this in the previous lecture, defines the coefficient of the highest order of s. And the n minus one zeros can be inserted in the loop to adjust all the other coefficients to those desired filter characteristic. This will be shown later in an example for a second order system. But those zeros are also zeros in the server function. Look, if we put a zero in the loop gang, here it is, and as is not unity, but as a, uh, is a polynomial of S, then we have zeros in the, in the loop gang, and then you find zeros in the server function. So then we cannot make a maximally flat magnitude characteristic because that is an all pole function, a Butterworth filter, maximally flat magnitude, or Chebyshev or Bessel, other characteristics are all pole functions. They don't have zeros. So we could make this polynomial okay by doing something with insertion of zeros. You can already see it here. If you put a num uh, zeros here in the in the DC loop gain, it will affect the solutions of the characteristic pol uh, stick polynomial. But you will also find them in the numerator, so there will also be zeros in the servo function, and you cannot make maximally flat anymore. That is the problem. But what if those, zero, if those zeros are also poles in the asymptote again? Then something happens. Let's look at this expression. If we write according to the negative feedback model, the gain as the product of the asymptote gain, which is in fact after proper selection of the reference variable equal, it, it equals the ideal gain. Um, and here the servo function. And now let's put a zero in the loop gain. So zero is in the loop gain. Here we have one zero in the loop gain. Would we'll put this in your equation. So one minus L times this. So the, this solution of one minus this will change. But also we will find this zero in the numerator as I told you before. But let us assume that we can make this zero a pole in the asymptotic gain. If this happens, then it cancels and I don't see it anymore. It's like a phantom. It is there, you don't see it, and you see its effect on the change of this characteristic polynomial. But you don't see the zero in the transfer. So that is the concept of a phantom zero. It changes the characteristic equation and thus the poles of the servo function, but it does not appear in the transfer from source to load itself. We are going to compensate the second order system with a phantom zero. A second order system with one zero can be written, the transfer function of the loop gain can be written with two poles and one zero and a DC loop gain. <coughs> Sorry. Then we substitute this in minus L uh, divided by one minus L and we find the servo function. And here is the expression for the servo function which can be written in this way. So now, uh, sorry, 
it can be written in this way. But here I already set the complete gain from source to load is the ideal gain. I assume that the asymptotic gain is equals the ideal gain. This tells me something about the mid-band, or in this case, the DC accuracy. It should be close to unity. And here you have a unity gain low pass function. And here is the product of the poles and the loop gain. And here is the first order term coefficient of s. And you see this first order coefficient of s is affected by the zero. Not a pro uh, if I do only one zero, you see only the s term here will be changed to by the zero. So the phantom zero itself I didn't show because it's, it would be also in the numerator here and, but it would also be in the denominator here. So it cancels what I showed you on the previous uh, presentation. So we can write the whole thing as well. Take minus LDC divided by one minus LDC is approximately unity. Then you find this expression for the first order term of uh, S of the Laplace coefficient. So we have a low pass cut off frequency designed with the LP product. So this is the LP product. Here we designed the bandwidth. We selected an operational amplifier that contributes to gain pole products, let's say the gain bandwidth product of the operational amplifier such that this term guarantees enough bandwidth for us. And this term can now be tuned with the aid of a zero so that we obtain a Butterworth characteristic. So with a negative real zero, we can only affect it, this one, of course, in one direction. Poles are negative, zero is negative, so we only can increase this term, this coefficient. So the absolute value of the sum of the poles can only be increased. Second order MFM. I hope you remember the Butterworth expression for second order, but I put it here again. It's like, if this is the cutoff frequency, then here should be uh, omega two divided by the cutoff frequency as coefficient. Well, from this, here is the cutoff frequency squared. And this term should be square root of two divided by the cutoff frequency. And then we can calculate the frequency of the zero that is required. And this is the expression for the phantom zero that we need. But we can only tune it in one direction. So if this is already larger than the square root of two, then we can do nothing. So only if the magnitude of the sum of the poles is smaller than the bandwidth divided by the square root of two, then we can do correction to Butterworth. Let's do a example. And the example that I will do is example 2.12 in the book. It has nothing to do yet with implementation of Phantom Zero. That is the next presentation. I first want to show you the concept and how the concept works and then implement it in a circuit. That will be the next presentation. So, here is a voltage amplifier. It was maybe a strange one, but nice to study the uh, concept of the phantom zero. Here we have a voltage source. Here we have parallel sensing the voltage at the output. We have voltage feedback and compared in series with the input. And our controller is this one. And I have given it a transfer, a DC gain with two poles. And the feedback element, I have given also again A, which is one over the uh, uh, one over the uh, desired voltage gain of the amplifier, and I can put a zero in it, one minus S divided by Z one. And this zero is then a phantom zero. Why is it a phantom zero? Well, let's say this one defines the asymptotic gain, so one over this relation is the asymptotic gain. So the zero here is automatically a pole in the asymptotic gain, and it is a zero in the loop gain. 
see so for a conceptual study of the effect of a phantom zero it is very easy just to put a zero in the feedback network because then automatically it is a pole in the asymptotic game because that is one over the transfer of the feedback network so let's do some numbers i put p1 at 1 hertz p2 at 100 hertz minus of course i give it the dc gain of a million and this an attenuation <coughs> of 100 so it will be a voltage gain from the source to load of 100 and let's forget about the zero first let's calculate the bandwidth the bandwidth is the product of the loop gain and the pulse so 1 hertz times 100 hertz times 10 to the power of 6 times 1 over 100 and then the square root because it's two dominant poles is 1000 hertz you can see the poles are dominant because the bandwidth exceeds the frequency of the two poles i have a pole at 1 hertz at 100 hertz but the bandwidth is 1000 hertz in this case so if i use the previous formula i can say i need a phantom zero here at this frequency which is 761.49 hertz about let's do it and plot the root locus and here you see the result done with slide cap here you have the two poles of the loop gain which are at one hertz minus one hertz and minus 100 hertz here you see the zero in the loop gain the zero in the loop gain is at um, 700 so and so hertz here and this is equal this frequency equals the frequency of the pole of the asymptotic gain so it is a phantom zero you don't see it in the gain the gain is blue and the only thing we see in the gain is two poles that's the result and i stepped you know this is basically the endpoints only for gain is one million and i stepped the gain from zero to one million to plot the root locus and plotting the poles of the servo function you see here the poles of the servo function are let's say the endpoints are of course equal to the poles of the gain so this is the root locus of this thing and it explains the concept of the phantom zero now here you see after compensation there is a zero in the loop gain as you can see here this is one pole here you see the the phases uh, coming already from 180 degree which is negative feedback then it goes to 90 degrees and then there is a zero coming here and here you see the zero the frequency of the zero it increases the loop gain at higher frequencies and you see the zero is visible in the servo function the servo function goes up a little bit but it's not visible in the gain the blue one the blue one is perfectly the mfm butterworth characteristic and of course the pole in the asymptotic gain is also there that makes the zero a phantom zero that makes that you see it in the servo function but you don't see it in the gain so the phase margin in this case you can calculate where is the loop gain unity so where is the loop gain unity it's here zero db and then the phase margin is 67 degree at 1.5 kilohertz if you do want to talk about phase margin anyway we rather talk about pole zero pattern <laughs> 